was a huge wrestling fan. I lived through both the uh, 80s Hulkamania rock and wrestling era and the 90s Monday Night Wars Attitude NWO era. Being from Philly, there has always been a great number of independent companies in the area, even well before the uh, most famous one came to be. I actually don't follow wrestling anymore, however, it was a huge part of my childhood and teenage years, and also a humongous part of pop culture in the 80s and 90s. The NES has only had nine wrestling games released for it, and the uh, difference in quality among them it's pretty different. Let me show you what I mean. Steel Cage Challenge came out around the same time as Super WrestleMania for the Super Nintendo. The main theme song is an 8-bit rendition of the theme to Super WrestleMania. The character list is pretty broad, including IRS, Roddy Roddy Piper, Sid Justice, and Bret Hart, among others. The selling point of this is the Steel Cage match, which in this game is presented as a no-ropes affair. Climb to the top to the win. Otherwise, pretty generic, with all the characters sharing the same attributes and moves. It's not very often that you'll find two LJN games on the same top five list. But you will hear WrestleMania Challenge came out before Steel Cage Challenge, but it sports a lot more personality than a lot of the games that followed it. The characters have varying body shapes and signature attacks, some of which even have versions of their actual signature moves. Uniqueness aside, I feel the games that come next on this list are way better. It's pretty surprising how much the very first game of the genre got right on the NES. Pro Wrestling's characters are colorful and unique, and while they still share a lot of the same moves, they all have their own signature moves, and the gameplay, while limited to a single match mode, still feels more interesting to me than a lot of the WWF games mainly due to the controls, gameplay, and overall look. WWF games always had the best music, but they lack in all the other categories. WCW's one and only NES title was actually a repackaged version of the Old Japan Pro Wrestling Company's Superstar Pro Wrestling, which is why most of the characters here don't have their actual finishers. Lex Luger never used an octopus twist as his big move, and Ric Flair certainly isn't known for a jumping front neckbreaker. The only characters which are in both the All Japan game and the WCW version are the Road Warriors, Animal and Hawk, and even here they're switched with other characters in the game. That aside, this is the only game with custom move sets and foreign objects, which are both much needed variety in this genre. At first glance, this might not be the best looking wrestling game. The lack of WWF or WCW license might have caused this game to be overlooked. But it's by far the best wrestling game on the NES. Each character has a large number of shared moves, and then a handful of which are unique to themselves. Then top it all off, each character has their own special attacks, many of which are only able to be activated during certain points in the match making for a more authentic pro wrestling feel, especially when you add in the constant running play-by-play -play on the bottom of the screen, which is surprisingly not at all intrusive. And the awesome cinematics of each character's special moves. Gameplay can be very intense, and this is why it's easily my favorite NES wrestling game, by leaps and bounds over its competition. And there you have uh, the top five best NES wrestling games, in my opinion. The other four that they released if you ask me, they're really not worth your time or money. I have all but one of them, and no real hurry to get that last one. If you happen to be getting WrestleMania this weekend, actually uh, it's Sunday right now that I'm recording this, so if you're getting it tonight, hope you enjoy the show. Hope you've enjoyed this show right here. Take care, and I'll see you next time.